Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. With uh, Father Paul Marshall, Director of the Holy Spirit Seminary, and Father John Freudenfelder, the Vice Rector, I welcome you to this celebration of uh, the Eucharist. It's the first Sunday in Lent, and you can see the number of our seminarians here um, as we uh, join them in praying for the success of the new academic year. We are blessed with uh, these um, candidates for uh, the priesthood, uh, and so uh, the community, uh, the diocese, is uh, also uh, a formation uh, community. So we ask you to pray and support um, them as they endeavor to form themselves into um, the shepherds in the model of the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. Jesus was led into the desert to be tested and to reaffirm his messianic identity and mission. And so we pray that um, his example of uh, overcoming the temptations with his adherence to the Father's will may inspire us uh, as we too um, struggle with our own situations of vulnerability. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
observances of holy land, that we may grow in understanding the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God's forever and ever. The Lord God fashioned man of dust from the soil. Then he breathed into his nostrils a breath of life. And thus man became a living being. The Lord God planted a garden in Eden, which is in the east. And there he put the man he had fashioned. The Lord God caused to spring up from the soil every kind of tree enticing to look at and good to eat with the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the middle of the garden the serpent was the most subtle of all the wild beasts that the lord god had made it asked the woman did God really say you were not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees in the garden, but of the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, you must not eat it nor touch it under pain of death. Then the serpent said to the woman, no, you will not die. God knows, in fact, that on the day you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like gods, knowing good and evil. The woman saw that the tree was good to eat and pleasing to the eye and that it was desirable for the knowledge that it could give. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. She gave some also to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realised that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together to make themselves loincloths. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Sin entered the world through one man, and through sin, death. And thus death has spread through the whole human race, because everyone has sinned. If it is certain that death reigned over everyone, as the consequence of one man's fall. It is even more certain that one man, Jesus Christ, will cause everyone to reign in life who receives the free gift that he does not deserve of being made righteous. Again, as one man's fall brought condemnation on everyone, so the good act of one man brings everyone life and makes them justified. As by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus was led by the Spirit out into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, after which he was very hungry. And the tempter came to him and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to turn into loaves. But he replied, Scripture says, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. The devil then took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For scripture says, he will put you in his angel's charge and they will support you on their hands in case you hurt your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Scripture also says, You must not put the Lord your God to the test. Next, taking him to a very high mountain, the devil showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. I will give you all these, he said, 
if you fall at my feet and worship me. Then Jesus replied, be off, Satan, for scripture says, you must worship the Lord your God and serve him alone. Then the devil left him and angels appeared and looked after him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Dear brothers and sisters, this um, is one of the extraordinary sentences in the Bible. We think of the people of God being led into captivity in Babylon. Or we think of Peter, whom, to whom Jesus said, you'll be led to places you'd rather not go. Jesus was not spared of this basic human experience. He was tested and then emerged, emerged even more focused on his identity and his mission. His identity and mission as the Son of God and the Messiah. His 40 days of extreme vulnerability was reminiscent of the 40 years God's people wandered in the wilderness. And this epic journey, known as the Exodus, formed our ancestors in faith, more than the promised land, the destination itself. For they were purified and cleansed of all that was unworthy of God. The 40 years helped them to discover what it meant to be God's people and to live their vocation as a beacon of light for others. They were formed indeed into a, a contrast, an alternative society that was an antidote to the unjust systems in Egypt and in all empires of the world. They were set apart by lives and relationships of love, service and compassion instead of exploitation and dominion and selfishness. So then is the time for us to, to imitate, to emulate even the wilderness of experience in a way that leads to transformation. In the first reading, Adam and Eve our first parents underwent the test of trust in the form of the forbidden fruit. The serpent, the tempter, saws doubts about the trustworthiness and the benevolence of God. What follows the lapse of disobedience is the breakdown of relationships in all directions. Their joys of selfishness alienated them not only from God, but also from all that God had made. The Gospel story is at pains to tell us how Jesus prevails over the old tempter. This in intense experience gives us a window into what it means for him to be the beloved of God and the one in whom God delights that epiphany at the Jordan. In effect, it is 
and a self-emptying journey writ large, a prelude to a total self-giving to be accomplished on the cross. It is the joys for the long hard road of fidelity, of powerlessness, over against the default desire for security, power, and self-preservation. So let's survey the three temptations. First, when Jesus is tempted to turn stone into bread, he responds by pointing to a deeper hunger. It is in our human nature to want to be in control and have everything at our fingertip. But Jesus shows us a different way. By recognizing God as the true bread, he calls us to reorder our relationships so that they are aligned to God's intention, which is not self-interest or self-preservation, but the enabling and the enhancement of the life of all. The second temptation is to be a superhero, a superman. It is the cult of popularity so rampant in our success-oriented society. Jesus does not buy into this illusion at all. He does not throw himself down from the parapet of the temple, temple as the devil suggested, or later on, throwing himself down from the cross. Instead, he shows us a way of enduring love. And finally, he's tempted to be free from all pain, suffering, and hurt. God will command his angels to protect you. The devil promises to Jesus. The implication is that if we are the beloved of God, then God will keep us safe, safe from physical and emotional harm, from frailty and disease, from um, trials and tribulations, or perhaps even death itself. But here again, Jesus shows another way. It is not a miraculous escape, not an impenetrable shield or a spectacular rescue. Again, we look at the cross where he teaches us that we are loved in our vulnerability, not out of it. We are the children of God who accompanies us in our pain and suffering, not a God who guarantees a lifetime of immunity. The lesson Jesus taught us in the desert is to put God's intention, God's will over above our personal comfort. When we are ruled by prosperity, security, and self-interest, which is often our default position, we forget to be morally indignant at injustice, at exploitation, at violence committed against God's little ones. When we are too comfortable and settled, we see no need. We hear no summons to God's vision for the church and for the world. Jesus in the wilderness shows us that indeed we can privilege solidarity over selfishness, self-giving over self-preservation, and love over fear. St. Paul in the second reading gives us a summary of this. He compares and contrasts the two figures, the first and the second Adam, in order to bring out the superiority of the gift of grace and life that comes from Christ. He gives us the optimism, the, the confidence that 
perfect love overcomes all fear, that the, dis the disobedience will be swallowed up by the obedience of Jesus. Today we pray for our seminarians and the formation staff at the Holy Spirit Seminary as they begin the new scholastic year. We are blessed indeed with these men who respond generously and in some instances even courageously to follow Christ and his call to embody his kingdom vision. Their journey of formation is like the exodus of God's people and the self-emptying journey of Christ. Indeed, the rhythm of the Paschal mystery is rigorously enacted in the priesthood of our time because the priesthood is at the front line because the priesthood, what the priesthood embodies, the church must also embody as a whole. So we need to die to all that is unworthy of Christ in order to rise and resemble even more perfectly the master servant. Instead of returning to some golden era of the church, these seminarians, these priests of the future, of our diocese, of our church, are to embrace the refining and the purifying that will enable them to live and serve like Christ. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. This suggests a powerful and a deep struggle as he learns to embrace the unknown parts of his messianic journey. As we begin this Lenten season, let us not be afraid to live the self-emptying pattern of the Master. Lent is our time to renew our own baptismal commitment to follow the way of Christ and to live our mission with courage. May the God who led his beloved into the desert to test, to renew, and to transform him also enable us to do the same. Please stand as we renew our faith by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, in the temptations of Jesus Christ, we see the persistent power of evil. But he vanquished our foe, and so we offer our prayers, confidently asking for his strength. For the church. That the spirit will deepen our identity as daughters and sons of God, inspire us on our Lenten journey, and help us to live as faithful disciples. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For one another. That the prayer, fasting, and almsgiving of Lent 
may bring forth a new springtime of faith in our lives and a deeper, more authentic love for one another. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For victims of war in Ukraine. That as the war enters its second year, there will be a concerted effort to end it. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are hungry each day, particularly the homeless, refugees, and those recovering from natural disasters. And that our fasting may make us more aware of them and our hearts more generous towards them. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elect, those adults preparing for initiation into the Catholic Church. That this period of purification and enlightenment will enable them to embrace their baptism, confirmation, and first Eucharist with joy. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the seminarians of, our, of the Diocese of Parramatta. That as they begin the academic year, they will seek to deepen not only their knowledge of the faith, but also their love for God and God's people in the local church. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead. That they will rise in glory and rejoice forever in God's love. Lord, Let us, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pause and add our own petitions. We pray also for um, Bishop Bede Heather, whose uh, second death anniversary occurs around this time. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your people may turn to you with all their hearts, so that whatever they dare to ask in fitting prayer, they may receive by your mercy through Christ our Lord.
sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Give us the right disposition, so Lord, we pray, to make these offerings. For with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, if we might pass over at last, to the eternal Paschal Feast. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as with our hands we acclaim. so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, out, took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of us, for this is my body, which for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. This in memory of me. The 
constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Therefore, O Lord, as we listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Forever and ever. Amen. 
stand as we conclude our liturgy. Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just some parish announcements. As always during Lent, Caritas Australia is asking for our support for Project Compassion. Donate online or via the boxes which you will find on the tables near the doors of the cathedral. The boxes are a good visible and tangible reminder of our duty to care for our sisters and brothers in need. The cathedral is hosting a business breakfast on St. Patrick's Day next month, which falls on a Friday this year. See the advertisement in the bulletin. We will also have a St. Patrick's Day celebration on Sunday, the 19th of March. More details next week. Please consider joining the new social and fundraising group. Leave your name at the parish office, please. The first meeting is this Tuesday evening. Details of our various Lenten programs and devotions are also to be found in the bulletin. First Friday Adoration follows Stations of the Cross this Friday. The Lord be with you. And Bow down for the blessing. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people gathered here, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go for the Mass is ended.
inviting people to a luncheon after that on later.